They look cute. I don't know. I can't decide. My hair and I are going through stages. We're just going through stages. And those are called the pixie growing out process. You've heard me rant about this. So let's get right into the video. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel. When you read where I talk about books and things. And it's been a minute since I've done a tag. I was kind of feeling guilty when we're doing a tag because again, people think tags are filler content and you know, whatever. But you know what? <laughs> I've had a week and I really, you can't see around me, but I was gonna do a TBR um, tour. And while I was doing it, I completely had a breakdown and now my TBR is all around me on the floor. <laughs> I am gonna do that video but it's I want to like get all of the books that I want together to show them to you together to not just like here's a book here's a book here's a book but you know so that it makes any sense that has nothing to do with the tag that I'm doing today anyway that's how my crazy life has been going uh, work has been crazy I couldn't film Pat the last weekend, so really this video you are seeing right now, I just filmed it, edited it, and brought it to you. Just like fresh from the oven, baby. So anyway, I found this tag just perusing the YouTube world, and now I have to find the name of the tag because I can't remember it. It's called the Book Addiction Tag, and I think that that's a, a good tag to do in my current situation. <laughs> so I have the questions here as always on my phone. So I'm just gonna read them out. I'm not that cool of a YouTuber that is going to memorize the question and then be like, hey, and say it. Goldfish memory. So let's start off with the questions. Question number one is, what is the longest amount of time you can comfortably go without picking up a book? It depends on my mood, really. I can go for a day, I can go for a month. I, I, I did a great reading slump of four years where I didn't pick up a book in four years. So I guess comfortably now that I have this platform, I would say a week, maybe, maybe two weeks. Two weeks I start to feel like I'm missing out on something or that I'm not gonna have anything to tell you guys so I'm gonna say that the co the most comfortable that I can for me myself in this as a, it, like enjoyment I can go as ever long as I want to go I mean again reading is my hobby it's not like I if I'm not reading I'm not breathing you know that kind of thing but definitely I my camera is flashing so you're gonna see a whole change in a moment but um i definitely try to pick up a book at least once a week that i all of my answers are gonna be long so just prepare for that all right we're back i'm sorry if things look a little bit different i had to change the battery of my camera <laughs> everything i'll be honest like everything in my life kind of feels like it's out of whack right now like everything kind of feels like out of control all right question number two how many books do you carry on your person physical or device at any one time um i say that if i'm carrying a physical book it's going to be one book if i'm carrying my kindle then i guess i'm carrying 200 books around and if i'm carrying my phone then i carry like whatever i'm listening to on audio at the moment i guess that the real answer is I only read one book at a time. I, I'm not somebody that's going to pack in two to three books, you know, or something like that, unless I'm going for a long trip. In that case, well, I'm going to take more than one book, but I usually would not travel with more than three books. I, I feel like my back hurts just thinking about that. So unless it's on my Kindle, but either way, realistically, where am I going that I'm going to need more than three books? I'm a very slow reader. So I'm just going to say that I would carry around three books, but usually it's one to three. There you go. One to three books. Okay. Question number three, do you keep every book you buy, receive, or are you happy to pass them on to make space for more? You guys know the answer to this question. I am more than happy to pass books along. I love on hauling books. I don't have a space where I can keep all of the books that I receive or that I buy or anything like that. So if I read a book 
and I just decided to move it along to somebody else I'm quite fine with that in fact I find it quite enjoyable to um, on haul I it, it like it's like oh I'm making space for things that actually bring me joy instead of keeping things that I'm keeping for some reason like I mean if if I was a, a rich woman and I had a house with a library where I could just put every book I have ever owned I guess I would keep books but I am more than happy not only to pass books along but clothes and sentimental items I don't have issues with that I'm like Marie Kondo's dream person question number four how long would you spend in a bookshop on a standard visit now this depends am I with my husband or not because if I'm with my husband we're gonna be there like 40 minutes if I'm with, on my own I think I usually spend between an hour to an hour and a half or even four hours it just depends on the amount of time that I have but I'm gonna go with an hour to an hour and a half that's like how normally I would spend in a in a bookshop just perusing <laughs> how much time per day do you actually spend reading now um, I think I do try to read every day like I said if I don't read for a day or if I don't read for two weeks it's fine but the actual amount of time I spend reading per day is not that much I spend around an hour to an hour and a half reading um, audiobooks I guess I spend a little more I've I've been known to spend four hours just to finish an audiobook in one day so it just depends but if I'm physically reading with my eyes the, I'm going to say that it's going to be an hour and a half. I don't actually, oh, hang on, I have something in my eye. I don't actually, I'm not a, a binge reader. Like, I, I don't sit down and read and read and read and read. I need breaks, I need time between books or else I get um, antsy and um, bored. Where does the task picking up a book appear on your daily to-do list? Um, usually before bed. Or if I have like a long time between classes, then that is when I um, pick up a book. Like like I know that I'm going to spend that time reading, especially if I have like a deadline per se to finish a book for a video or something. Then I'm going to read those books during those times. Like if I have sometimes I have four hours between classes, but I am usually reading before bed. And it's usually about an hour before I go to bed or to an hour and a half before I go to bed. That's why I spend an hour to an hour and a half on reading daily. How many books do you reckon you own in total, including ebooks? I'm going to go with I believe I own about 200 books, including ebooks. Question number eight Approximately how often do you bring up books in conversation? All the time. I bring up books in conversation all the time because it's my main hobby it's what i do for fun it's like what brings me joy per se so i always somehow manage to get books into conversations with my students i manage to get books into conversation with my friends my friends um a lot of them read but a lot of them don't so i just kind of bring books up and i'm like oh i read in a book that you know blah 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 i am i am that I am that annoying dark academia friend. <laughs> Number nine, what is the biggest book by page count you have finished reading? And I happen to have it right here and that is The Wise Man's Fear and it is 1,189 pages. And if you know me, that's about like <laughs> 700 pages longer than the average book I read. But I actually did kind of enjoy this book not a lot but it was fine I like the first one way better number 10 is there a book you had to get your hands on against all odds searched bookstores online digging stalk the author etc not any recent books you guys know that my favorite book of all time I'm inserting a picture because there's a mess here and I just don't want to deal with getting it you know that this book has been out of print for many years and I went through the trouble of finding another copy because that's how much I love it. I don't usually duplicate on books, but in this case, I felt it was necessary just in case something happened to one of the copies and I didn't have the other one. And I paid way too much for it. 
when I say I paid way too much, I mean I, the first one I bought for one euro and then the second one I bought for two euros, so. And I i don't think I'm gonna ever be that person that I just have to have this book by this author right now, you know. Um, other than that, I just, I, I, new releases for me are way too expensive, so I just avoid them. So I, I am not big into that kind of stuff. I guess I would like to have a few special editions of some books. But then again, I think why? Because it's, usually that's just for aesthetic purposes. And if I already have the book, then what's the point? Like for me, there's no point. For book collectors, there's a point. But I don't consider myself a book collector. I just consider myself a reader. Number 11, is there a book you struggled to finish because you refused to DNF. Oh my god, Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. That is like the most current one that I refused to DNF and I should have DNF'd. Um, I didn't like the story, I just didn't like it. But I was reading it for Space Opera September and I just refused to DNF it. So I read it at like 3.5 speed and I just just you know was like ugh, i just want to get get you done with i the big spiders didn't do it for me i'm sorry what are three of your main book goals for 2020 or 2021 if you started planet i haven't started planning for 2021 but i think my oh that's a good one uh what are some of my book goals i want to finish reading uh the daphne du Maurier's that i do own I want to stop bargain buying books that are popular. I've been doing really well with that one. And number three, I want to make as big of a dent on my TBR as possible. Like at the end of the year, I would like, would ideally like to have a TBR that is less than 50 books long. Also, I think, you know, in, I'm going to include that and I'm going to cheat, you know. I would like to read the Mistborn trilogy, trilogy and I would also like to read the um, Bone Season. I don't know what it's called. Uh, the books that I have in the Bone Season. I would like to catch up in those two series before the end of the year. Number 13, have you ever had the privilege of converting someone into a reader? <laughs> no. Nope, I haven't. I, I've had the privilege to convert someone to veganism, but God forbid people like I like I convert them to to reading, to being a reader, but definitely have converted people to veganism, so there you go. <laughs> I think I'm gonna get some shit for that. I promise it wasn't for me nagging or anything. It was just that the fact that I became vegan and then they were like, hey, I think I'll become vegan too. And I was like, cool man. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, no, I have never been able to convince anybody or anyone around me to become a reader. I usually, that that's why I started this channel, because I didn't have anyone around me to be a reader with. All right, and the last one is describe what books mean to you in five words. Oh, that's hard because as you can see, I like to elaborate a lot. So let's try it. Everything is wrong until books there you go i guess that sums it up <laughs> i think that was a lot more intense than i intended it to be but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this little tag i'm sorry that i don't have like some i don't know i don't know what i'm expecting out of myself some like crazy content maybe i wanted to do a book chat or something but maybe i'll film that this weekend i have more content coming up like i was feeling on a like downwards like I, I love how I talk with my hands. Can you guys tell that I am Latin American? Um, I was feeling like a bit of a, a downward slope of creativity when it comes to booktube. And then suddenly I have that creativity back and I'm really excited. Um, I think it has to do with the fact that I'm feeling better overall in my life about things. So I hope that I have some fun and exciting things to show you coming up. And well, I'm going to export this footage, I'm gonna edit it, 
And without further ado, I bid you adieu with a friendly reminder that I will post every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, come hell or high water, and that I appreciate each and every one of you so, so much. By the way, my birthday's coming up. I am very excited because it's going to be my first booktube birthday. I am so pumped for that. I don't know why. I think I, I, I want to do a special giveaway for my birthday. So I don't know. I want to do something special for my birthday because I rarely celebrate my birthday. And I think that I'm feeling good enough to maybe celebrate it this year with all of you. So um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye.